love the Word of God. We honor that as we come to read it together. We are reading from Paul's letter to a church in Ephesus. It's on your screen, beginning in verse one. As a prisoner for the Lord then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. Down to verse 11. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. May we pray. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you that in this letter that you inspired Paul to write, he's giving us a great vision of your church, a mature church, a church in the city reflecting who you are for the sake of others, to love and to bless and to serve. Lord, we don't want to be a church that is just consumeristic, materialistic, just as individuals. We want to be the body of Jesus. Loving our city as you've loved us. So as we talk this morning about what it means to be your church, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Fill us, meet with us. Whether we're here and we're not followers of Jesus, we pray, Lord, that you would touch everyone who are exploring and following. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Grab a seat, folks. Grab a seat. We are in a unusual little sermon series talking a bit of family business about what it means that we're growing as a church. We've grown a lot the last year and that growth has been exciting and beautiful. We've seen our kids in youth ministries thriving and going on mission trips and going away together as our youth and our kids are overflowing. It's so exciting to see. We've seen our Alpha course grow, that people feel safe to come and explore Jesus without feeling judged, without feeling pressured. Our midweek groups called Vintage Communities. We started a year ago with like 15 or so. Now we have over 100 across the city gathering together midweek to do life together and follow Jesus together. Our mission to the city where we love and bless the city of Santa Monica and others is thriving. We have wait lists, weeks long wait lists to go down on Thursday nights and join with the Salvation Army to host a dinner, an outreach dinner for those in need. We are serving in Compton, joining with other churches to bless practically the city of Compton. That's the biggest it's ever been as we take a whole tribe down there and love our city. We are seeing God do incredible things in us and through us to the city around us. But with growth comes growing pains. We love growth because we love people and we love people discovering the love and grace of Jesus Christ. But with growth comes growing pains, whether we feel them on Sunday, which I do. We may not see the same people every week as we used to see because it's just so busy. We've got three services now. It seems to be a season of growth with growing pains. So we've been looking at what it means for us then to address these growing pains. And this week we talked about, we're gonna look specifically at what it means to grow, not just wide, but grow deep and to grow in discipleship. To grow in discipleship, to grow into what Paul says in that verse we just read, that we would become the mature body of Christ. 
the mature body of Christ, that we would actually not just be a community that loves Jesus, but becomes like him. That we may, he says, attain to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. When you come to follow Jesus, we all come broken with habits, hurts, and hangups. And yet, as we follow him, we are healed on the inside out. And over time, we attain to the full measure, the full measure of what Jesus has for us. And that full measure is what Paul says is really just to become like Jesus. We are the body of Christ in the city. As Jesus is, so we are now to the city around us. We are to smell and look and taste like Jesus to those around us. This is the full measure of what it means to be the family of God. And what's really important is what Paul then writes in verse 14, because he says, it's only when you're mature that you will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves blown here and there by every wind of teaching. You do know, don't you, that there are alternative teachings to Jesus outside the church and sadly within the church. And he said, you've got to be mature, otherwise you will be deceived. You will be lured away into false teaching by what it means to be faithful Jesus followers. Come as you are mature in him. So the question we looked last week, as we looked at, we are called to be a mature family of God. The question we looked at last week was the question that Dallas Willard writes about, one of our great heroes. And Dallas Willard on the screen here says, every church needs to be able to answer two questions. First, what is our plan for making disciples? And second, does our plan work? We need a plan and then see if it works. And so this morning bit of a very unusual sermon here. We're going to talk about what our plan here is at Vintage. Our plan to become the mature body of Jesus Christ. That when people come in and maybe aren't followers of Jesus, they go, I think this smells a bit like Jesus. This tastes a bit like Jesus. Because that's who we are wanting to become like. So here's the plan. The first thing is, by the way, can we just, I've got like 100 slides in random order, and someone back there is trying to follow me. And so can we just give it up for our pro presenter slide person at the back? <laughs> Sylvie is amazing. And I've just seen some dear friends who helped plant the church. The Kempels, look at you guys. We love you guys dearly. All right, so here's the plan. Number one, we are a church for both the exploring and the following. Discipleship is not just how to take followers of Jesus and make them more mature in him. It starts all the way back with people who are maybe, they wouldn't call themselves followers of Christ, and maybe they're afraid of church, maybe they've got hurts by the church, and we want to be a place where they can be loved, welcomed, without judgment, and helped in their exploration of Jesus. Not being pushy or preachy, we want to create a safe space for everyone, including people who are looking at Jesus and wondering what they think of him. But also following. We want to go rich in discipleship. Therefore, what are we going to do about it? Well, the first thing is our Sundays. Our Sundays are for both. We work hard on Sundays to make sure the exploring feels safe and loved and the following feel fed and richly discipled in Jesus. That's actually quite tough. It's easy to go one extreme or the other. And that's why we actually have a range of teachers come in, because some will emphasize one or the other just naturally. But hopefully we create a, a community where Jesus is speaking to the crowd, where the disciples are fed and the explorers are intrigued. We work hard at that. And again, that's why we have a range of teachers who come in and we're looking, uh, if you're ever wondering, how do I know who's teaching next? Because I really want, I can't wait for Johnny to preach or something like that, which I love. He's such an incredible teacher. Well, and we have guests coming in. Well, what we're doing, just so you know, we don't generally publicize who's teaching when. So we just don't have busloads of people coming for particular teachers. We're a family here at Vintage. But if your family, we'll come on to this in a minute, if your family, we will start to actually tell family who's speaking, just so that if you're inviting guests, you know who you're inviting your friend to. I often go, hey, who's speaking if I'm bringing my boss? 
because sometimes you think that speaker, that teacher will really help my friend. So if you're part of the family, you'll start to know and we'll communicate that through some other way. (laughs) But Sundays are only the first level. We cannot do everything on Sundays. In fact, depending on where you are on exploring and following, we want to really deep, deeply help you where you're at in more focused ways. So our primary discipleship plan is around this continuum of helping you where you're at on that journey. So the first thing we wanna do, for those who are exploring, we run something called Alpha. Alpha's Tuesday night. Pretty much it's Tuesday night church for people who don't call themselves Christians. You can come, I host that, talk about the big questions of life, help people with their questions about Jesus, people who are deconstructing their faith, maybe they grew up with Jesus, not too sure what they believe anymore. Alpha is the place for you. After Alpha, and we really only encourage people to do Alpha twice, otherwise you'll be an alcoholic, and we don't want alcoholics. <laughs> we do something called Rooted. Rooted are for people who go, okay, I kind of want to take baby steps now in following Jesus. What does that mean? I have no idea what this Bible thing is. I have no idea what this church thing is. I have no idea what prayer is. Rooted is the way that we help you 101 how to follow Jesus. That is run on the same nights of Alpha, Tuesday nights, in the different part of the building. So Alpha normally gets about 400 people to come to that first night. Rooted is for people coming out of Alpha, or maybe not out of Alpha, but somewhere else going, hey, I think I need Rooted. I need to know the the first steps of what it means to follow Jesus. Coming out of Rooted then, for everyone else who are following Jesus, we have vintage communities. These are where groups of, like Jesus had his 12, right? We say, get your 12, get your 15, that you can follow Jesus together in the city. Gather weekly, pray, encourage each other, care for each other, but grow together. And who's your 15? Because that is where family is developed and deep discipleship is developed. But as we've grown, as Johnny, John Mark and I have gathered together in the wider team, we've recognized there's a bit of a gap. There's a gap in this journey. And that gap is there because we recognize so many people are coming who do call themselves Christians, but we're all coming from so many different places. And some of our foundations are healthy, and if you're like me, some of my foundations were not healthy. And maybe we've got, we're strong in this area, but weak in this area. And what we found is we need to kind of create a space where we lay really rich, deep, vital foundations for what it means to follow Jesus. So that after that, you can go into vintage communities and you, and you can run together. And so we've thought, let's do something between rooted and vintage communities. And so this September, we're launching something called School of Discipleship. What that means is over a year, three semesters, over a year, uh, Johnny, John, Mark, and I, and others are, are pulling together content that we think is such a beautiful, deep, rich foundations to the Christian life great theology that we need to know in this city, what it means to follow Jesus theologically, what it means to follow Jesus ethically, what it means about the Holy Spirit, how to be full of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit, what it means to be a disciple as opposed to a consumer. There's all sorts of things that we want to lay deeply in our lives together. We're trying to limit it to a year because we want to go deep. We want to have rich theology and practice and life together over those three semesters. So between Rooted and Vintage Communities, as of this September, we're launching a School of Discipleship. That means if you're coming out of Rooted, go to School of of Discipleship. Lay that deep, rich foundation in your life. If you're coming to Vintage for the first time and you are a Christian, School of Discipleship is where you start. That you can actually get really deep, rich foundations in your life. But... The question is, well, what if I'm already in a vintage community, yeah? This is amazing. We have a hundred of them across the city. They're amazing. And people are going, but what about me? What if I'm in a vintage community? What happens? Well, next slide says the answer. Nothing. (laughs) We love you in communities. Our vintage communities are phenomenal. Johnny has got a great discipleship plan of curriculum within. We've got six modules of teaching and 
We will this summer be reviewing that as we always do, getting feedback. We'll be looking at how the, that curriculum meshes beautifully after school of discipleship curriculum. So nothing. Or you go, but I don't want to miss out on the school of discipleship, which I totally get as well. So there's three options for you if you don't want to miss out and you want to join the School of Discipleship. You could join as a group. As a community, you could go, hey, let's all do School of Discipleship together. Right? Let's all do it together. Or secondly, you could go, you know what? Peace out, community. I'm going to go do School of Discipleship. Right? And your hosts will love you and bless you and support you. Or you could do shock and awe both. You could go, I could do two nights a week here. This is unbelievable. I've never been more committed in my life, right? I could do two <laughs> nights a week. I could do Monday night school of discipleship and then maybe whatever night your vintage community meets on. We are longing to be a family that's richly like Jesus, mature in Jesus. This is what we feel is just going to be such a joy. We, I expect five, six hundred people at School of Discipleship. Like, this is where we all grow together richly. You'll be in small groups. The format of the evening is simple. You'll come and we'll have dinner together in small groups. You'll have a table host. We'll then um, have dinner. So it will be family. It won't be lecture style. It will be family in groups. You will then listen to teaching and then talk about your homework because there will be homework. This is not just come on Monday night for funsies. This is, we are going to grow deep together. And so if you don't want to do homework, don't come. Because we want to go deep together. Right? We want to grow richly in Jesus together. There will be then a and r every, probably every night. Where at the end, we'll have the Alpha Pub open. Uh, but then you can also, Johnny, me, or John Marker, someone will be here answering tough questions. That's related to what we're going through. So three semesters and deep, rich teaching about what it means to follow Jesus. And then, coming out of School of Discipleship, we're forming all these new groups, because you'll have been a group together for a year. And then you can go into being a vintage community together. And if you're thinking, okay, well, does that mean, what if I arrive at Christmas? Can I just join them? Well, you're already here, so that's one answer. But if you do, someone does arrive at Christmas, do they have to wait till September? No, you can enter any of the three modules you can start the School of Discipleship and just do all three in any order. So that's going to start September. We're going to start sign-ups in a few weeks that you can register, and you just register for one semester at a time, but that's where we're going there. What it means is, look at these four things. Well, five with Sundays. If you're thinking, how is Vintage discipling us? It's that. It's that. Get into one of those four things. Sunday's not enough. Sundays are not enough. And you will be underwhelmed with our discipleship if you only come Sundays. And so, but one of those four areas will be for you. And we want to grow you richly and together as a family of God. But what about the rest of the stuff that we do? Does that mean Gary's just cancelled everything else we do at Vintage? Absolutely not. So on this next slide, you see that there's still lots going on in the life of our community. Mission, serving on a team, life stage ministry, mums and dads groups, care courses. Um, so much going on. But they are for particular needs, maybe particular times. They're not for everyone all the time. So they're still going. They're amazing. Thank you so much for all of you who are leading those other ministries. And you can make the most of them as you see, this is my season right now in following Jesus. But we don't want to confuse them with the core of this is where we're inviting you into. Now, I do recognize one of those things at the top in that bubble, um, Lizzie and I have loved and we've been dreaming about for so long, we'd love to do this at one point because um, I'm a theology nerd, I'm a Bible nerd, and I love deep, 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 deep teaching, which is incredible. Uh, when I went to seminary, I thought, oh my gosh, this should be for everyone. So this September, we're launching something called Seminary for Everyone. <laughs> which, which is simply this. On a Sunday, during probably the 11.45 service, there will be legit seminary classes for people to go, I want to sign up for one of them. We're talking with Bible Project, uh, Fuller Seminary, and others about getting teachers in 
to teach a class for 10 weeks. It won't be, it won't be credit at a college, it'll just be audit or whatever you call it over here. Um, but it'll be, you'll sign up for the 10 weeks, it'll be something like, you know, um, I don't know, Christian ethics for a 21st century urban center or something like that. Or it could be understanding the theology of the book of Job or something like that. Like stuff that only gets people like me excited. Um, but we hope you, so that's starting this September. You can sign up for seminary for everyone. That's the plan, right? Um, yeah, that's great. I'm excited by it. We want to invite you into it. And if you have questions, then we'll be able to unfold those more. Particularly if you're a host of a community leader, you're a community leader. Johnny will be running a training soon. I think you've got that date in your calendar that you can ask questions of Johnny. Hey, how does this fit right now for us? Okay. But here's the thing: that's not the only leg of the plan. That's only one leg of the plan. The other leg is what Paul says in Ephesians chapter five. He says, "Next slide. We have Ephesians coming up." He says, "Look." So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the teachers, and the pastors to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. Again, he says, from him the whole body joined and um, held together in every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. So maturity is not just having a plan. Maturity is having a people. Plan plus people means maturity. And what Paul is saying is the people is not just the people on stage. In fact, he says, look, yeah, as a pastor, do your job by giving everyone else jobs. (laughs) That's my job. It's actually to train you to do the works of ministry. To activate the people of God to become the mature people of God. I am doing a bad job if I do everything. It's so easy, isn't it, to come to a church and let others do stuff. Part of the beauty of a big church is all that God's doing through the big church, but part of the weakness of it is we can actually consume rather than contribute. We can spectate rather than serve. In fact, it's kind of like um, being a fan of a team rather than being on the team. It's so easy being a fan of something rather than helping to be on the team. And yet church is about becoming on the team. I mean, being a fan, say you go down and watch an, an NFL game or a hockey game or something, you're in the bleachers and it's amazing, right? You're wearing the jersey, you've probably got your face painted, you're actually chanting all the songs or whatever it may be. You are committed as a fan, Right? You may be even bringing other people, bringing my friends, let's go watch. And it's so exciting to be, this is my team. But you're not on the team. And in fact, sometimes church can be like that. This is my church. I'm bringing friends to vintage. I'm even wearing the face paint. And yet, I'm just consuming. I'm watching. Someone once said church was like this quote on the screen here. Church like 22,000 fans desperately in need of exercise watching 22 players desperately in need of a rest. <laughs> and if you've seen pictures of me 14 years ago when we started Vintage to where, what I look like today, yes, that's me. So the, to become a mature, discipled community is actually to move people from being fan to a team, from moving from guest to family. It's so easy to come to Vintage and go, I love the Sunday services, I love what I'm receiving, but we will remain immature without you joining in. You have a unique contribution. We need one another. We are a body and every part is different. And so the first thing we're gonna invite you into as far as our discipleship here at Vintage, is to invite you to stop being a guest to become a family. To not just show up on Sundays, but actually go, you know what, I want to make this my home. And as I said a couple of weeks ago, if this isn't the church for you, we totally respect that. There are amazing churches in our city. We just invite you to pick one. 
whether it be Mosaic, whether it be Reality LA, whether it be Westside Vineyard, Bel Air, Prez, whatever, it, they're amazing churches. We recommend and encourage you to pick one so that you can actually move from being on the bleachers to be part of the team, to helping actually move the ball down the field. So we have a way of you making vintage home, moving from guest to family. We have an event coming up, it's on the screen here, called Making Vintage Home Dinner. It's really <laughs> cryptic, right? And that is going to be regular, it's a new dinner, we'll host them once every semester, and the next one's on Tuesday, April 30th, and that is for people to go, man, I've stuck six, or I'm sticking six, I've never really made Vintage Home, um, what does that actually mean to make Vintage Home? And I, I've got questions maybe before I make Vintage Home. I'll be there, Johnny will be there, other leaders will be there to help explain what it means to make vintage home. Now, people are going, I'm confused though, because you have a different dinner <laughs> called vintage family dinner. So let me explain the difference. Vintage family dinner is for people who've already made vintage home. It's like, dude, I've been around a while, I'm part of the family, vintage is my home, I'm serving, I'm giving, I'm part of the team, I've been moving the football down the field here for a while right? And we're starting that dinner on an annual basis. The confusing thing is they're in the same week, uh, one after the other. So you can choose which one to go to. Hopefully that is clear which one you can go to. But we'd love everyone in the room here to go to one of them because you're either I'm family or I'm either, huh, I wonder what it makes, I wonder what it takes to make vintage home. The vintage family dinner is much more of a celebration of what God's doing with some kind of insider to speak about some of the challenges we're facing, updates behind the scenes. So if you are family, we need you to come. We've got some new board members we want to introduce to you, some new staff members, a new pastor has just said yes, so he'll be joining us soon, which we're very excited about. So there's lots of updates there. We'd love you to come. It's not just come and have dinner, but it is family business a bit as well. Make vintage home. Be part of the body that we can grow together as the body of Jesus. And what does it mean to make vintage home? Well, what does it mean to be part of this that we can see the body of Christ mature in every way? Well, we say principally it's about two things that we want you to do to be part of the church here, the body here, to get involved in helping us be all that we can be. Everyone serving, everyone giving. Everyone serving, everyone giving. Paul said, as each part does its work. Now, when it comes to serving, you've got two ways you can serve. Similarly, like you've got two hands. Like one way of serving, one hand, is where there's a need. You may not feel passionate about it. You may not feel it's your perfect gift set. You may feel it's more of a sacrifice. You may feel there's not much in this for me, but there's a need. And that's what family sometimes is like, right? I mean, I, I think back and go, man, imagine if I was like a teenager in my home and we had dinner as a family and then I went into the living room, turned on the TV and my dad came in and said, hey, yeah, what are you doing? Get in the kitchen. We need help with the dishes. I wonder what it would have been like if I'd said to dad, dad, I, I just don't feel that's my gift. <laughs> just, I'm just not feeling that right now. I don't feel the Holy Spirit's in that. In fact, I feel actually my sisters feel the calling more than I do, right? Imagine what would have happened from my sisters and my dad. Get in the kitchen, right? There's a need, right? And there's something beautiful about serving in the way of Jesus when there isn't anything in, in it for us. Jesus' hobby was not kind of, ooh, I can't wait to die on the cross. He did it because there was a need. And he says, look, this is what love is, to lay your life down for your friends, to sacrifice for others. But there's gonna be needs, and we have Sunday teams where we need your help. We just need your help. We're family. But there's also your other hand, which is serving in ways that really fit the design of how God made you. And that's what we want to encourage here as well. We don't just want to do this just to help. We also go, you have a unique and beautiful contribution in this whole discipleship and exploring, following adventure that we're on together. 
And so over the next few months, we'll be giving more and more opportunities that you can actually serve in ways that reflect your unique passions and callings, whether that be with worship or prayer ministry or missions. Whether if you think of those four ministries that we have that kind of are sequential, Alpha, Rooted, School of Discipleship, and then Vintage Communities, we need disciple makers in each of those. We need mature people in each of those to be table hosts. I'm gonna help this group. I love people who don't know Jesus to love on them well. Well, we need you because you'll have 10 to 15 people like that to love and to welcome, to help answer questions. Whether it be rooted, I love helping people take baby steps in the Christian life. School of discipleship, man, I've been around for a while. I'd love to be a table leader that I can help disciple this, this, this younger community. Vintage communities, I want to roll with 15 people, I'll open up my home, and we will serve Jesus together in this city. I can't do all of that. Neither can Johnny. We need you guys to go, actually, where's my passion and where can I give? Where can I serve? The other part of being part of the family is not just everyone serving, but everyone giving. Giving in church is a touchy topic particularly for me, because I grew up in an environment where there was terrible teaching on finances in church. First of all, it seemed to be motivated by greed. Certainly, it felt like some people were getting more than others. There's manipulation. There's all sorts of horrible stuff going on. Part of the reason why I left the church for many years. And so for me, financial generosity in church has never been a topic I want to push or pressure. Part of my own sense of woundedness. And yet... I also have to be honest and realistic with us all in that being part of the family is everyone pooling their resources that we can keep going. And part of my failing sometimes as a pastor is not being honest about that or transparent about that sometimes, that we all need to give to see this place continue. There's some myths sometimes, because I don't talk about it much, that people think, oh, we must have external money coming in because Gary doesn't talk about it much. I go, no, there's no external money coming in. We have no denomination giving us funding, and we have no sugar daddies or sugar mamas <laughs> kind of writing checks, underwriting this thing. Every dollar comes from you guys, and we are so thankful for your generosity that we can serve the city well, be the family of God together well, love our kids, our youth, and others well, because you guys, and we all go, we think this is worth investing in, is the people of God. And so, let me just give you some brief updates. The update is, how are we doing this year in our, in our giving? You can probably not see this very well because it's small, but 5.7 million are, are our expen- ex- expected expenses in our fiscal year from July to June. We've grown so much that that has grown a bit because, you know, we've had to order more donuts and the rest of it. But... Uh, <laughs> But we've had a lot, we have to hire more staff to care for the growth. We want to hire pastors. Uh, Our projected giving is so incredible at 5.4. Thank you so much. Everyone pooling their resources. Um, We're still, we still have a, we have a shortfall because uh, we've grown 40%, but our income has only grown about 5%. And so our expenses have gone up with the growth, but not everyone yet. There's always a lag to coming to a church and giving as people make vintage home. So we want to encourage you to be part of that. Um, And don't worry, we have full accountability. We have full transparency. We have an independent board who oversee our finances. um, And we don't have any one person kind of giving an extraordinary percent of our income. We actually have a little little rule of thumb here, not one person can represent more than 5% of our operating income. So if they feel called away um, to Nashville or somewhere, then uh, we don't collapse. Um, But don't worry, no one is anywhere near that 5% threshold. (laughs) Don't be there, ooh, I should pull back just in case. (laughs) I'll let you know. (laughs) I'll let you know if you're nudging the 5%. Uh, and then part of the financial update is how are we doing on the renewal campaign if you remember a year ago we talked about we are stewards of this building built in 1950 the congregation has been here on this on this geography since 1925 we are now stewards for the next generation and generations to come 
So we're raising money to fix this place up. It needs a lot of work, infrastructure. Uh, and also we're expanding capacity for our kids and our youth and our missions and our community in interaction and loving our city well. So we want to expand capacity and make sure that this is a healthy building for the next 100 years. So we are stewards of this place. And so I'm so thankful for all of you that a year ago, many of us pledged uh, $9 million to redo this place, which is what it's gonna take. And together with expanding next door, fixing it up, it's pretty much closed right now. Uh, so far, we've got 52% come in, which is incredible. Uh, and so there's 52% to go. And we, uh, some people have said to me, so yeah, you know, when do you need the money? When do you need me to start giving the pledge? And it's kind of like, now? <laughs> we've, got, we've got bills coming up. In order to break ground, actually, we need a certain amount of it in to be able to commit to projects. And so we're encouraging everyone to go, thank you so much for your pledge. And we'd love you to uh, fulfill that. If you are in a place where you need to redo your pledge because life goes up and down, we get that. You may want to raise it. You may want to lower it because of hardship. Just let us know uh, so that we can budget accordingly. And if you're going, well, I can't actually give now. I'm going to give monthly or I'll give next year. That's totally fine as well. Just tell us so that we can actually budget accordingly. So that's what we're doing on our financial update. Now, on finances, many are going, but hang on a minute, there's so much more to say about finances, and there is. I haven't talked about it much. And yet, I remember reading a quote by Billy Graham that went something like this. If, you, if your attitude to money, the Jesus way of handling money is healthy, everything else in your life in following Jesus will be healthy. Jesus talked about where your treasure is, your heart is. If you actually get that healthy, it has almost like a cascading effect over every other area of your life. And so I felt actually convicted, I need to teach on this, not in order for money grab at all, you know me, but actually as a pastor, laying better foundations of the Jesus way of handling money, we need to talk about that. For your own sake and for the sake of the city, so next week, I'll be doing my best to talk about a healthy, Christ-centered view of financial generosity. And so you're probably in here thinking, huh, I wonder what Reality LA is doing next week. <laughs> well, I thought, mate, it's, it's lovely to check out other churches. You know, no. <laughs> Come back, because we want actually to talk about it in a rich and healthy Jesus kind of way to relay some good foundations. As I said before, I grew up with all the wrong foundations for money, which seemed to be, in, in summary, give to God that you're gonna get lots back. And that's a terrible theology. Um, and so we're gonna lay a really healthy view of financial generosity that is around generosity, uh, the Jesus kind of way. So next week, please come, and we're, that's a big moment in the life of our church. But as of now, we want to turn words into action. Jesus said in his great Sermon on the Mount, blessed are you that hear these words and put them into action. So we don't want to be all talk. And even this Sunday, we want to invite you into being part of our community and particularly moving from being a fan to being part of the team. That we can run together and be the church of Jesus Christ in our city together. And so what I want to do is take about three or four minutes to actually give you an opportunity to respond. And in, on your seat or under your seat, I'd love you to reach in and you'll see a card. And I'd love you to get it out and there'll be a pen there. If you're in the courtyard, these cards are on your seat or in the balcony, they're on your seat. And there'll be pens as well. What I want to do is take three or four minutes to fill this in together. Now if you're thinking, whoa dude, I'm just visiting this Sunday, that's totally fine. <laughs> You may just want to fill in the front of the card, which is your email, that you may go, oh, I'd like to hear what's going on at Vintage. Sure, sign me up for a newsletter and you can unsubscribe at any time. But we also, if you are part of the family, please do complete your personal info because we want to make sure that it's correct in our database. And so please do that. And then on the back, there's two teams you can join, two hands. On the one hand, we need everyone to like join a Sunday team. 
Just join a Sunday team. Help out. And then there are other teams that you go, I want to know more about. I've got a passion for that area. I would love to help. Maybe with School of, school of Discipleship. Maybe it's with Alpha. Maybe it's with Rooted. Maybe it's with Communities. Maybe it's with Worship. I've got a passion that I would love to be used in that area. So fill that in. And then finally, giving. You can either check, send me more information on giving, or you can sign up today. To I want to be part of this. I want to help this place grow and, and keep the lights on and bless the city around us.